organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on this Friday edition of Daily Iowan TV, IMU Bookstore. A University of Iowa student was charged with burglary and later mentoring. We'll take a look at how University of Iowa students are engaging with the younger generation in Iowa City. We take a look at the very exciting men's basketball game from last night. And then a very disappointing one from the women's team. This week the weather is going to be all over the place. Find out more. All that more coming up. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good morning and thanks for tuning in to our live Friday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Ryan Scott. The University of Iowa student has been charged with third degree murder, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, third degree burglary for breaking into the Iowa Moral Union bookstore in the early hours Thursday morning. The University of Iowa police officers found the student who was identified as Mason Seifert after multiple burglar alarms went off in the IMU. Seifert admitted to taking items from the bookstore including two MacBook Pro computers and a Mac Mini. Seifert is not a university bookstore employee and he is currently being held in the Johnson County Jail. Stick with Daily Iowan for updates on this story. In our earlier coverage, we told you about University of Iowa President Bruce Harold recently announcing that the UI continued to develop its renewable energy program. The project will develop over the next eight years to ensure a consistent supply of alternative sources of energy. President Harold estimates that by 2025, coal will no longer be a part of the energy portfolio. Daily Iowa TV reporter Zhao Li tells us more on this development. Eight years ago. In 2008, the University of Iowa set its sustainability target for 40% renewable energy while reducing the use of fossil fuels, primarily coal. Up to this point, the university has reduced its use of coal by 60%. We're making great progress, and we see that goal is, is um, well on track, and that caused us to kind of look up and say, what's next? On February 20th, the University of Iowa President Bruce Harrod announced that the UI campus will be coal free by 2025. The university is now focusing on utilizing one of the renewable energy sources called biomass. Biomass is organic material that can be combusted and it is readily replenished or renewed um, in a short time frame. One of the key uh, forms that we are using it is a grass that we are growing specifically for the University of Iowa that's called miscanthus. We have over 500 acres of miscanthus planted, and we're adding uh, another 300 this year. The university's decision to produce its own fuel can bring economic benefits to Iowa. So right now we spend our fuel budget entirely out of state because there's no coal in, in Iowa. By growing our own and producing our own fuel, we have a chance to concentrate our fuel spend in state mm -hmm. and improve the, the economy as a result. It can also bring many environmental benefits, including improve the greenhouse gas emission profile, nutrient runoff reduction, and improve the soil and water quality. UI students Molly feel positive about the change. I think that'll be a very beneficial thing for the university. I think right now it would be it would bring a lot more comfort in drinking the water. And of course, brings us an energy secure future. Reporting in Iowa City, Jolly Daily Iowa TV. While the weather here has been a pretty cold lately, I'm joined in the weather studio here by Mackenzie Cooper, who will hopefully have an update for us. That's right, Ryan. It has been a bit chilly, and this next week will be a little bit all over the place, which is pretty typical for Iowa during this time too of the true. year. Too true. Now let's take a closer look in the weather studio. Although it's March, the cold has returned, but not for long. This morning's high will be 33 degrees with partly cloudy skies. This afternoon will be cloudy with the high expected to hit 39. The clouds will stick around into the evening hours, and the high is expected to reach 34. The sun will be shining Saturday morning with a high expected of 44. Now let's take a look at our six-day extended forecast. 
The sun will continue to shine into Saturday afternoon and it will warm up quite a bit with a high expected of 61. Clear skies are expected into the evening hours with a low of 44. Clouds will be sticking around on Sunday with a high expected to hit the mid 60s. Monday will be the warmest day of the week with a high in the low 70s, but high winds are expected. Tuesday and Wednesday will cool down a bit with a high expected in the mid 50s. The sun will return on Thursday with mostly sunny skies and high reaching the low 60s. That's all I have here in the weather studio. Ryan, back to you. Big Brothers Big Sisters is a student organization where UI students mentor kids in the Iowa City School District. Reporter Alexis Tanzi takes a look at the group and how it all works. Big Brothers Big Sisters at the University of Iowa pairs student mentors from the university with students in the Iowa City School District. The mentors work to improve their students' academic lifestyles as well as their social lives. Academic mentors meet with their student once a week at school and help them with their homework, hang out with them during recess, or even eat lunch with them. Community mentors meet with their students outside of school to engage in fun activities. From there, you have a lot more options. You can meet them outside of the school district with their parent permission. Uh, you're allowed to go to movies or go out to eat or hiking or the park, anything that sounds fun with you and your little. Big Brothers Big Sisters asks students who wish to get involved with the program to commit to being a mentor for at least 18 months. That way, they can build a strong relationship with their little and hopefully make an impact. Family-based advisors at the Iowa City Schools are the ones who choose kids to participate in Big Brothers Big Sisters. They tend to look for kids who are having difficulties academically, socially, or behaviorally. Mentors try to help the kids become more enthusiastic about school or be an outlet for them to confide in. And we threw the football around, and then that's just, after that, he just started talking about everything. He really, he really like, felt comfortable being himself, so that was really that was awesome to see. If you wish to get involved with UI Big Brothers Big Sisters, look out for their emails, posters, and social media posts. You can email their president, Monica West, if you're interested. This has been Alexis Tanzi, Daily Island TV. Last night, annual event that focuses on improving women's rights took place. Reporter Mackenzie Cooper has the details. The 15th annual night of 1,000 dinners was held Thursday night in honor of International Women's Day, which is March 8th. This event was hosted by the Johnson County United Nations Association. This event hopes to raise awareness regarding women's rights locally and internationally. It gives visibility for women, not only locally, but globally. And it makes people aware of the problems women have in Iowa and internationally. Guests were able to enjoy an international dinner, followed by a presentation from Dr. Ann Keish. This year's event focused on women refugees and educating refugee children. The event also promotes creating relationships between women from all over the world. Sharing our international differences and all that we have in common. Proceeds from the event will benefit the Adopt a Future program, which supports refugee education in Kenya. Reporting from Old Brick, this is Mackenzie Cooper, Daily Iowan TV. A bridge made out of recycled railroad cards in Buchanan County has caught the eye of Johnson County Board of Supervisors. There has been a bid put in for a similar project on Lower West Branch Road. The bridge will be cost effective because the materials used will be taken from discarded railroad cars. In addition to saving money, the bridge is expected to last from 50 to 100 years. Sounds pretty great. We also, another pretty great thing was the basketball game last night that Iowa had against Wisconsin. I'll turn it over to Katie Sextro and Mary-Kate Harrion, who have more. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, Iowa basketball had a very busy day yesterday between the women opening up against Northwestern in the Big Ten tournament and then the men playing their last road game of the regular season. That's right, and it will continue to be a busy weekend with women's gymnastics taking on Iowa State this Saturday, along with baseball traveling to Minnesota and getting the opportunity to play in the Vikings' brand new stadium. And then men's basketball has their last home game on Sunday, so definitely a very exciting and full weekend for Hawkeye sports. That's right, and yesterday the women's basketball team took on Northwestern in their first game of the Big Ten tournament, but ended up losing 78-73. to Three Hawkeyes scored in double digits, Megan Gustin with 27 points, Ali Disterhoff with 18 points, and Mackenzie Meyer with 10 points. That's just basketball for you. Basketball is a game of runs, and um, they went on a run in that in that stretch. They, like like Coach Bluter said, they were upping their defensive and offensive intensity at that point, and um, we just didn't respond as well we, as we could have at the end of the second quarter. A couple threes, that's always nice. Yeah. You know, kind of gets us going a little bit. Um, 
You know, I, I think that we, we scored a lot better in the third quarter. I think it was our best scoring quarter uh, of the night. Um, you know, there's a stretch where we didn't turn the ball over. You know, we turned the ball over down at the end of the game uh, too many times and just didn't give ourselves opportunities. I mean, they shot the ball seven more times than we did and, you know, out-rebounded us. That's, that's a little what's frustrating, I guess, is the rebounds because you have control over your box outs. And that's, that's the one that's a little bit frustrating. Disterhoft also was named the 2016-17 Academic All-American of the Year for the second consecutive season. She's the fifth scholar athlete to win Academic All-American of the Year for women's basketball in back-to-back -back years since it was started in 1987 and 88. With those honors, uh, it's an amazing accomplishment to be named captain of the All-American team academically. Uh, and so we're really proud of, of her successes in the classroom. Really appreciative and grateful for that. Uh, it's, you know, not just myself, but I know my entire team and, you know, every student athlete puts a, a lot of work into their studies and it's something that we take a lot of pride in. Now moving forward, the women's team will wait to hear what their fate will be moving into the NCAA or NIT tournament play. And then moving on to men's basketball, the Hawkeyes took on number 22 ranked Wisconsin last night and were able to take down the Badgers 59 to 57. You know, Nicholas Bear was pretty much unstoppable with his three-pointers, came away with 14 points. And then at the end there, Peter Jock making, or not making the shot, Cordell Pemsel getting the offensive rebound, handing it over to Jordan Bohannon, who hit the three for the win. Yeah, and Jordan Bohannon did have 11 points last night, and it was great right after he hit his shot. You could see his two brothers, who mm -hmm. also played at Wisconsin, jumping up, jumping for joy, and Bohannon said after the game that the first thing his brother said to him was just, go Hawks, so that's a pretty great experience yes. for him to have. That's so cool. Well, it's a very quick turnaround for Iowa as they only have two days to get prepared to take on Penn State on Sunday at Carver for their last home game of the season. You know, Penn State is sitting at 14-16 and 16 this season, so the Hawkeyes have a pretty good shot. And, you know, you never know if they do well that game, do well in the Big Ted tournament. They could go further than people thought they would Yeah, this I think season. they definitely have a good shot to get a bit at the NCAA tournament, depending on how their last couple games do pan out. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well. And moving on from men's basketball, we take a look at one uh, track athlete who has been doing particularly well this season. L reporter Lucy Rodine has more. Aaron Mallett has Big Ten titles, All-American status, and a school record already under his belt during his time at Iowa. In this postseason, he's looking to add to that already lengthy list of accomplishments. Mallett took home his second Big Ten title in the 60-meter hurdle event last weekend at the Big Ten Championships. Mallett set a new personal record, school record, and improved his time to third best in the nation. It's just, you know, it's so much upside, you know, and it just makes me really happy, you know, that the train is paying off and stuff like that, and still got two minutes to go to even further drop it. <laughs> Mallett attributes his success to head coach Joey Woody and his training style. I've been working with Coach Woody for four years now, and, you know, I just really trust in what he's done with me and what he's done with other athletes, you know. He always says trust the process, and that's kind of a hidden motto of the team this year, just really trusting our coaches and trusting in what we've been doing all year. Mallett will continue to build off his coaches and team's trust as he finishes out the indoor season and his career at Iowa. I came into, you know, Iowa really, with really big dreams and hopes and stuff, and I can honestly say I've accomplished 90% of those hopes and 90% of those goals, and I think I have a chance to win the national championship. So, you know, with those being in place, my fifth or my fourth year is just, you know, it's memorable. You know, you just, you come into college and you have so many hopes, and for those to actually come true is amazing. Mallett will have another chance to achieve one of his final goals of winning a national title. You got to take it one step at a time, and if I get to that final, I'm shooting for the title. Mallet is currently on pace to qualify for the NCAA championship meet. That meet will be held March 10th and 11th in College Station, Texas. Reporting from inside the indoor track facility, this has been Lucy Rodin, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Now eight other Hawkeyes have qualified for the NCAA championships will be March 10th and 11th. That's right. Now tune in on Monday for all of your Hawkeye recaps from the weekend. We'll also have some updates from the NFL Combine. Ryan, back to you. And that's all we have for you today. Be sure to check out our website, dailyiowan.com, for all the latest in news. I'm Ryan Scott. Thank you for watching.